Hello, welcome to section 2.3. We're going to continue with polynomial functions and solving, and also the fundamental theorem of algebra. A couple of our learning targets. We have the fundamental algebra to determine the number of zeros. All right, we're going to find all zeros of polynomial functions again as a continuation of 2, 3, and we're going to use Descartes' rule of sign to help us find zeros. A couple of theorems we need to discuss. The fundamental theorem of algebra, uh, if f of x is a polynomial of degree n, n has to be greater than 0, then f of x has at least one root in the complex number system. Um, and that really is, is everything that we've been doing. So if you have at least a degree of 1, you're going to have one solution, um, and, and so on and so forth. One of the things I think we get confused with is, is the complex number system. And we have our real number system with our, our rational and our irrational over here. And then where does the complex number system fall? Is it somewhere out in space over here? You know, where is it actually located? It actually includes the real numbers. So complex numbers are written in the form of A plus BI. And the A is the real part. So the A falls in everything inside here and then the plus bi is everything in the imaginary part of the complex number so they're not two different numbers complex numbers also include the real number system uh, linear factorization theorem if f of x is a polynomial of degree n once again where n is greater than zero then f of x has precisely in linear factors. So this a sub n, this is just a, a multiplier or a something that was factored out. Um, could be anything. And then you have your, your linear factors. And this is true once again with all complex numbers, including real numbers, that uh, you can always write this. So just once again, for example, if you had the square root of 2, it would be x minus the square root of 2 as its linear factor. Um, so this could be with rational numbers as well, 2x minus 3, or if it was written, I guess, as x minus, it could be written as x minus 3 halves. So any of these numbers work in terms of writing them as linear um, functions. And so to throw in the, the bi, you could have x minus 3i. Once again, still a linear factor. <clears throat> so these include all complex numbers. And once again, just a reminder that roots of polynomial can be real or complex. And remember, complex includes the real number system. So when we use that word complex, you can't just strictly think about um, imaginary numbers. The complex conjugate theorem, so the third theorem to start us off, let f of x be a polynomial with real coefficients which is all we deal with, but that has to be true. If a plus bi is a root, then a minus bi is also a root. Think about when you complete the square or you're doing the quadratic formula. You have plus or minus the square root, okay? And that's where you get the plus or minus the b or the bi. Or sorry, the bi. So they always come in pairs. So one of the things that we've already done, but we're going to do again with... Um, the complex conjugate theorem is write a polynomial function with roots 3 plus i and negative 2i. Now I'm only giving you 3 plus i, but that's where the complex conjugate theorem comes in and says, okay, well, if 3 plus i is a root, then 3 minus i is a root. And if negative 2i is a root, then positive 2i is a root. So plus or minus 2i. And you have to understand that from the complex conjugate theorem while you write the polynomial function. So we're going to do the same thing we did the other day with uh, irrational solutions. Is we're going to set it up as x equals 3 plus or minus i. And we'll do the other one as x equals plus or minus 2i. And we're going to work backwards from completing the square. So the first thing on this one, you'll subtract 3. And that will leave you with plus or minus i. And to get rid of the square root, we'll square both sides. Because i is a square root, it's square root of negative 1. That leaves us with x squared minus 6x plus 9. 
is equal to i squared. Now remember, i squared is equal to negative 1. So on the right-hand side, even though we're squaring, we're squaring a square root with a negative 1 underneath. We do get negative 1. Add 1 to the other side. And we get x squared minus 6x plus 10 is equal to 0. And so there's our first factor. It is a quadratic because we have those two solutions. And we'll do the same thing on the second one here, a little bit easier because you already have plus or minus 2i. So you're going to go ahead and square both sides. x squared is equal to 4i squared. Once again, i squared is negative 1. So x squared is equal to negative 4. And then you can add 4 to the other side to get x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. We now have two factors, both being quadratic, but we're going to take those two and multiply them together. And we will get x squared minus 6x plus 10 times x squared plus 4. There's four solutions. We should get a degree of 4. And this is now just going through and doing the distributive property. So I'm distributing the x squared to the x squared plus 4. Then I'm going to distribute the negative 6x to the x cubed, or to the x squared. So that's negative 6x cubed. And then the negative 6x to the 4, so that's negative 24x. And then the 10 to the x squared, and then 10 to the 4. And since we want to write this as a function, we're going to say f of x equals x to the 4th. You have negative uh, 6x cubed. So we got negative 6x cubed. Then we have 4x squared. Try that again. 4x squared and 10x squared. So that's 14x squared. And then minus 24x plus 40. So there is the polynomial function with the roots 3 plus or minus i and plus or minus 2i. And also remember we could we could still keep those same roots and multiply this entire thing through by some number. That's that a sub n. And it would change the graph of it, but it wouldn't change the solution of it. All right, uh, moving on to the next thing. So another type of question I could give you is using the given zero, find all the roots of the polynomial function. So before, you know, we were solving by factoring. Um, we were solving using the calculator and, and the rational root theorem. Well, now I'm going to just give you one of the solutions. But if you see, the solution is in the complex form a plus bi. So once again, we know that there's not just one, there's two, negative one plus or minus three i. There's a degree of three. I'm looking for three solutions. Well, I already have two by the given and understanding the complex conjugate theorem. So I'm really only missing one. So how could we find that last factor? How could we find that last zero? And as you're doing this, you know, you go back and, and if you have a factor, then you can, you can divide it to figure that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, once again, our solutions, and we're going to work backwards from completing the square to create that quadratic that gives us the solution. So we're doing the same thing we just did a second ago, but for a different reason. So you get x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals negative 9, and then add the 9 to the other side. And so we get the factor, the quadratic, that gives us those two solutions. Well, how do I still find the third? Well, if it's a factor, then we, when we do division with the polynomial, we should get a remainder of zero and get that last factor. 
So unfortunately we can't use synthetic division, so this is something we're going to have to use long division on. And so we'll do x squared plus 2x plus 10. And then underneath we've got x cubed plus 4x squared plus 14x plus 20. And now we're going to divide to figure out what that last factor is. So what times x squared gives us x cubed? So what times x squared is going to give us that x cubed? And that would be x. x times x squared is x cubed. x times 2x is 2x squared. And x times 10 is 10x. And now we subtract everything. So make sure you subtract everything. That will leave you with 2x squared plus 4x plus 20. And then we do the same thing. What time x squared will give us 2x squared? And that would be 2. So 2x squared plus 4x plus 20. And when we subtract, we should be expecting to get a remainder of 0. Otherwise, we made a mistake somewhere. So now what we know is we have a factor of x plus 2. We have a quadratic factor of x squared plus 2x plus 10. And that gave us our two original solutions. So what's our last solution? Well, x plus 2 is a factor. So that means x equals negative 2 is also a factor. So if use the given 0 to find all the zeros. Let's go ahead and just write them all out. x is equal to negative 2 and then the original negative 1 minus 3i but also negative 1 plus 3i so negative 1 plus or minus 3i so there's a way that you know once again I told you in class that there's ways I can get you to do certain things here's an example of a way that I can kind of get you to do long division to be able to find the remaining roots all right so one of the last things we're going to talk about is Descartes rule of signs um, this can get a little tricky but Pay attention, stop, write, make sure you get everything written down, and this is something we can talk about more in class, if, especially if you've never seen this before. Um, let f of x be a polynomial function with real coefficients. So what we're going to do, we have the rational root theorem, which helps us identify the possible rational roots. Descartes rule of signs help us, helps us identify the type of roots that we're getting um, when we're finished. So the first thing is the number of positive real roots. So this is for positive real roots of f of x. All right, rational, irrational, doesn't matter, is either equal to the number of variations of sines of f of x, so variations of sines of f of x, or less than by an even integer. All that last part means is you have to subtract 2 every single time to get the different combinations. So let's just look at that first part before we can go to the second part. So on 3a, f of x equals x to the fifth minus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 2x minus 6, we're going to identify the sign changes of f of x. That's what it says, the number of variations in the signs of f of x. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to write, even though you can see them, I'm going to write f of x, I'm going to write whether it's positive or negative. So the first term, x to the fifth. positive. Negative x cubed, negative. 2x squared, positive. 2x, negative. 6, negative. How many sign changes do you have? So positive to negative, that's 1. Negative to positive, that's 2. Positive to negative, that's 3. And then the last one doesn't have a sign change. So you have at most three positive real roots of f of x because you have three sign changes or less than by an even integer so if I subtract two from three I get one so I also have a possibility of only having one positive real root that's what that last statement means less than by an even integer okay so now we're going to look at the second part of it so the second part says the number of the number of negative real roots, so now we're looking at the negative real roots of fx, is either equal to the number of sign variations 
in f of negative x, once again less than by an even integer. So now we have to find f of negative x and those sign changes. So we have to plug in negative, I'll see if I can squeeze it in up here, negative x. So this would be negative x to the fifth minus negative x to the third plus 2 times negative x squared minus 2 times negative x minus 6 and then look at those sign changes so negative x to the fifth well negative raised to a fifth power odd number of times is going to give you a negative negative x to the third once again that will give you a negative but a negative times this negative in front here will give you a positive for the third term you got negative x squared so that's positive positive times positive 2 is positive and then negative 2 times negative x that is a positive and then the 6 the constant at the end is always going to be a negative so it's negative 6 so how many sign changes do we have here? Negative to positive, one. Positive to positive, no sign change. Positive to positive, none. And then positive to negative two. So we have at most two sign changes for the negative real roots, but once again, or less than by an even integer, so we subtract two from that and we get zero. So those are our possibilities with positive real roots and negative real roots. If we want a better idea to understand what that is saying about the real roots, we create this um, chart, sometimes called a P and I chart. P for the positive, N for the negative, and then I is for your imaginary. So let's fill it out. Look at for the different combinations that you can get from these four things. So I'm just gonna start with three positive. If I have three positive, I could have two negative, okay? But I also could have three positive and zero negative. So I just went from three to two and three to zero. And then we could go from one, one to two and one to zero. So I could have one positive, two negative, one positive, zero negative. So those are my combinations that I can have for my, for my real roots. Well, how do I find the imaginary? Well, what's the degree of the polynomial? How many roots do you actually have? And I have a total of five. So all of these have to add up to the total of five. So if I have three positive, two negative, that means I have no imaginary. Three positive, zero negative, I have two imaginary. One positive, two negative, I have two imaginary. One positive, zero negative, I have four imaginary. And look at your imaginary. See how they're even numbers? because they have to come in pairs. So those are the different possibilities. When we go to solve this problem, our solutions should match up to one of these four um, possibilities in terms of our real roots. Okay, if you wanna try the second one on your own, pause it and then come back and see how you did. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So we have g of x sign changes, x to the fourth is positive, 2x squared is positive, and then the one last one is negative, so you have no sign change and then one sign change. So we can't subtract 2 from that because we'd end up with a negative number. Then we'll do g of negative x. If I plug in a negative, negative raised to the fourth power is still positive. If I plug in a negative for the second term, you square that as positive, positive times positive, 2 is positive, and then your last one's negative. So once again, we only have one sign change. So if we have one positive, we have to have one negative because those are our only possibilities. That's our only combination, which means what do we have left? Well, we have four roots, so it has to be 1, 1, and 2. And that's your only possibility, and that's the nice thing, is that when you have a problem like this and there's only one possibility, you know there's one positive real root, one negative real root, and you'll have two imaginary. So that's Descartes' rule of signs. 
Um, do we need it all the time? No. Um, is it going to be beneficial in some of the stuff we do? Absolutely. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. Um, what I would like you to do at this point is really just pause the video. I want you to work through this problem. I want you to find all the roots of the polynomial function. This is really a review from the other day um, in terms of using your rational root theorem, uh, synthetic division to break it down into a quadratic and then solve the quadratic. So these are the types of problems that will be on your, on your test um, where you have to figure out the best way to solve the problem, whether it can be factored or solved like I just talked about. So go ahead and pause, try to work through the problem yourself, and then come back and see how you did. So the first thing for me is identifying what those rational roots are. Now this one, there's not going to be any fractions because you have a co leading coefficient of 1. So it's really just plus or minus all your factors of 60. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we should be going back down the other way, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30, and 60. So a lot of possible rational roots, but they're all nice numbers, so shouldn't be too hard to identify which ones they are in the calculator. Um, so we would go to the graphing calculator, plug this in, look for how many roots do we absolutely need. We need four, but we only need two so that we can break it down to the quadratic. So let's go to the graphing calculator. And I already got it ready to go, so let's graph. And here's where we are. Even though this thing, you know, our roots go up to plus or minus 60, you can see, I can zoom out pretty quick on this thing, and you can see that the only two places it crosses is right here. And it looks to be at negative 2 and positive 3. All right, so negative 2 and positive 3. So we're going to huh, use synthetic division. 1, negative 3. Put any, any missing zeros if you have them. We don't in this one. Carry down the 1. 1 times negative 2. And go through the process of synthetic division. I made a mistake. I don't know what I did there. Let's see. Let's go back to this number. Uh, negative 2 times 16. How about negative 32? And I knew I mis made a mistake because I needed a remainder of 0. That's what um, showed it on the calculator. So I knew it was a factor. Now, x minus 2 is the root. Remember, the factor is x plus 2. So that's the actual factor, but the solution is negative 2. Now we're going to do it again with our other 0 of 3. Don't go back to the original because we're trying to break down. We started with x to the 4th. It doesn't look like a 4. x to the 4th. Now we're down to x cubed, and we want to get down to x squared. So carry down the 1. 1 times 3. And once again, looking for a remainder of 0. Now we can solve the remaining quadratic. We're now down to x squared. So we got x squared minus 2x plus 10 is equal to 0. I know I can't factor this because they were complex roots because I couldn't see them on the graphing calculator, so either complete the square or the quadratic formula. I'm going to go with completing the square. I'm going to come back up here. So half my middle term is negative 1. Squared is 1. plus or minus the square root of negative 9 is 3i. If I add 1 to the other side, we get 1 plus or minus 3i. So the solutions would be negative 2 
3 and 1 plus or minus 3i. And those are your solutions. And you were looking for a total of four solutions. And you got all four of them, negative 2, 3, and then your two uh, complex numbers, 1 plus or minus 3i. So there's another review on how to solve polynomial functions. And we continue to learn more and more about um, polynomial functions. Um, we could use Descartes' rule assigned to check that we get one positive, one negative, <coughs> and then two imaginary. So that's it for today on the fundamental theorem of algebra and Descartes' rule assigned. Once again, finding all zeros of polynomial functions.